Praise the Lord. Y'all ready to get into the word this morning? Open your Bibles to Psalms 46. And uh, I was this, this, well, a couple days ago, I just asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to give to the people on Sunday? Uh, it's been a hectic week, you know. But he said, um, tell them to get out, how to get out of trouble. Isn't that good? Don't you want to know how to get out of trouble? Well, I hope you're taking notes because you ought, to, you ought to take notes on this one. You teenagers ought to write this down, how to get out of trouble. Amen. And some of you older people, too, because you get into too much trouble for your age. Some of you do. Bless your hearts. Amen. Bless your darling hearts. <laughs> trouble. Trouble. You know, the, there, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, Solomon said, uh, a, a man's day, as a man's days are, uh, so are troubles. You know, remember Jesus said that about trouble. He said, uh, uh, every day has enough trouble of its own. Remember him saying that? Trouble. We all have it, don't we? We all have troubles on one side or another. Uh, I think of, uh, I think Peter you know, Jesus had him walking on the water, and he got in trouble. He sank down, didn't he? He let those doubts and fears come in, and he sank down in the water. But the Bible says that Peter cried out to the Lord, and the Lord reached down and picked him up. You know, Daniel had some trouble. He got thrown into a den of lions. Those lions had not been fed for a very long time. You know, in that... Uh, in that culture and in that time, if they had a situation like that, they wouldn't feed those lions. Those lions were starving to death. And uh, Daniel got into trouble because he wouldn't bow down to the idols of Babylon. Amen. He wouldn't, he wouldn't bow down to the false gods of the time. And so, and we shouldn't do either. We do not need to be bound down to the idols of this world. We need to be bound down to our Jesus. Amen. And so, you know, Daniel, there he was in the lion's den. And he cried out to the Lord. And he, and, and he told the king, too. He said, now, my God is able to save me, but even if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow down to your idols. He was willing to be eaten, but God sent the angels and shut the mouths. He was in trouble, but he cried unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard his prayer. And you know, Paul and Silas, they were in trouble. They got thrown into jail. They had been preaching the gospel, and they were thrown into jail. They were beaten, they were flogged, and then they were thrown into jail for preaching the gospel. The Jews didn't like it. The Romans didn't like it. And they were thrown into that they were, it says that they were thrown into the inner prison. And they were in trouble, people. Let me tell you how much trouble they were in. They had been beaten. They were bloody and, you know, had, you know, scabs all over their back. And they were just in bad shape. And then they get thrown into the inner prison. And the, the picture that, uh, there, the, let me tell you about the inner prison. The inner prison is where the sewage system of the whole town comes through. So you, can you imagine the bacteria that was in that situation there? That was nasty. But the Bible says that Paul and Silas uh, prayed. They prayed and they sang praises to God at midnight. Would you have done that? I want to think I would have. I want to think that I would have, Brother Rich. I want to think I would have. But I also know me. And, and, and uh, sometimes I have a tendency to not be thankful and praise in the middle of the trouble. But Paul and Silas praise the Lord in the middle of the trouble. And, that, and you know what? They got a reward for it. Because the Bible says that God sent an angel, shook that inner prison, shook the, that jail. The prison doors were open and they walked out free. And on their way out, they got to the, the man who was watching guard. They got to lead him to Jesus and his whole family. Hallelujah. 
He said, don't worry about, fear not. Just believe on the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved in your whole house and the whole house will get saved. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and, and uh, Abednego. Thrown in that fiery furnace. Trouble. See, we whine. We ain't had that kind of trouble. We just whine. Our trouble was, you know, our sewer broke, our wash, wash machine broke. Wah, wah. Uh, you know, we ain't got trouble, people. They had trouble. But they cried to the Lord. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't uh, uh, yield to Belshazzar, but they wouldn't yield to the king's, Nebuchadnezzar's uh, idol. They wouldn't worship his idol. And uh, so Jesus just comes right into the fire with them. See, he'll go into your trouble with you. Did you hear me? Did you catch that? He'll go into your trouble with you, and that, that trouble does not have to burn you, squirt you, or you don't have to come out smelling like smoke at all. If you let the Son of God get into your trouble with you, you got to ask him into that. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they, ha they asked him into their trouble. Glory be to God. Are you listening? Invite him into your trouble. Cry into the Lord in your trouble. And, and he's going to answer you. He's going to hear you. Psalms 46, 1. Now, in the King James Version, it, it starts off, it gives us, it tells us the background of what's happening here. And it starts off and it says, for the director of music. And so that'd be like me saying uh, to Rich. Now, Rich, this is for you. Or to Daniel. Daniel, this is you. For the director of music of the sons of Korah. According to Amaloth, a song. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about the sons of Korah. Let me read the rest of the scripture. It says, God is our refuge and strength. Two things there. He is refuge and strength. An ever-present help, that's a third thing, in trouble. Ever been in trouble? <laughs> well, God can be your refuge, your strength, and your help in the trouble. But you have got some things that you need to do. And um, uh, we need it in, in all of that. We're going to skip down to verse 10. And verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. When you get in a situation and you're in trouble, uh, my point one, and point number one in this, if you're taking notes, is put a shut to the up. And that's what Medea would say. Put a shut to the up. Okay? You know what that means? You're doing this. But this is what I want you to do. Amen? See, the devil traps you by getting you to open your big fat mouth. He does. He traps you by getting you to agree with him. And so, it, there's no notes on this, but I'm just pulling my notes out of my spirit. But it says, the, to the, of the sons of Korah. I don't, I don't know if it says that to, in your version, uh, uh, 46 1, but some of your Bibles might say that because that's how it originally starts out. To the sons of Korah. Let me tell you a little story about Korah. Moses, you know, come down off the mountain. He had received the Ten Commandments. Are you seeing, seeing the picture? Remember the story? Anybody seen the Ten Commandments, either version? So he come, he's come down out of the mountain. He'd been up there all the time. He's glowing. He was shining. He comes down with a tablet in one arm, tablet in the other. He's got the Ten Commandments. They're down there having a party, making a false god. They threw all their uh, gold and, and made a calf. And, and he comes down there, and he gets hacked. Throws the tablets down. God sends lightning. There's an earthquake. There's a big mess down there. God is fairly well ticked off. Well, you know, that all happens. And then, and then 
they, uh, as time moves on, they go back and God, God gives them some tablets. He redoes the tablets. As Moses breaks these. Rewrites them. And Moses comes down and, and the, they're hungry. So they're not getting the, they're not getting the, what they want to eat. And they start belly aching. And there was a man there, his name was Korah. And Korah starts griping. Any of y'all ever gripe? No, well, quit it. Quit it. Put a shut to the up. They, Korah started griping and complaining. He got a rebellion against Moses. How many remembers the story? He gets a rebellion against going against Moses. And they all start fussing against Moses. They're going to rebel against Moses. And God is hacked again. And he sends an earthquake. And he sends vipers, poisonous vipers, to bite everyone that was complaining. Let me tell you a secret. Every time you complain, there's poison involved. There is a viper from hell biting at your heel. When you get in rebellion, when you get into complaining, when you get into negativism, it's the devil, the devil, the devil. He's nipping at you. Because if he can get that poison in you and get you to complain and rebelling like Korah does, see, then he can destroy you. So all of these people start dropping dead. They start falling on the floor and they're passing out and they're, and they're, they're laying there, you know. Uh, some of them almost comatose and some of them, you know, just barely looking around. And God and Moses said, Lord, please, please, please don't kill. Please don't put this judgment on these people. I know they deserve it, Lord. But listen, if you're going to kill them, kill me too. I mean, just kill me too. I mean, he takes up for them. Now, that's what a good pastor does. That's what a good leader does. They, they're going to take up for you with God. Well, they deserve, Lord, for they deserve this, but if you're going to spank them, well, you're going to have to spank me too. Because I'm, just, I'm going to stick with them. You know, I believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And a good father, a good mother, a good leader, a good parent, uh, you know, a good pastor, a good elder, deacon, they're going to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself. And, and that's what we got to do. And so Moses believed in him. He just, and he just prayed, Lord, if you're going to kill them, kill me. And so the Lord said, okay, Moses, because of your prayer and your intercession and your willingness to stand in the gap and be one. See, that's the type of Jesus. Jesus said, I'll take their place. Well, Moses said, I'll take their place. Right? Amen. And no greater love hath any man than to lay down his life for his friend. So... Uh, so uh, Moses makes this intercession, and God says, okay, I'll tell you what to do. He said, I want you to take a brass pole. I want you to take a pole, and I want you to make a brass serpent out of it and put it on the pole, and you hold it up. And everybody who looks at that brass serpent will be healed. And how many of you knows the symbol of medicine and doctors is, is that pole with the snake on it. Have you ever seen that in medicine books and in, in hospitals? You see that pole with the serpent at the top of it. That's a symbol of healing. Come all the way back from Moses. They may not even be a Christian hospital, but they got that symbol. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so Jesus, you turn around and look in the New Testament, and Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever looks on him shall be healed and saved. Jesus is, took our sin upon him on the cross. That pole was a type of Jesus on the cross. And when we look on the cross, we're healed. Hallelujah. When we look at the cross, we're healed. We're saved. We're delivered. We're set free. The poison of sin no longer can kill us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Bless the Lord. 
And so that's some background there on this whole story with, with uh, uh, Psalms 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. And, and so the reason I said put a shut to the up is because verse 10 says, Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. You know, sometimes I've told Daniel and Andrew when they were littler, and sometimes now, but not, I, of course, it doesn't really work now, but I mean, I can still do it. But I'll say, shut up and do what you're told. Now, every once in a while, I say that to people, shut up and do what you're told. You know, because sometimes you just need to shut up and do what you're told. Well, why? Well, why? well I'll tell you later, but right now, just, I, I just need to shut up and do what you're told. And God needs his people to shut up and do what they're told. We are in a society that does not want to be told what to do. And they don't want to be told what to do by God Almighty either. Well, God ain't going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do it my way. Yeah, and you're going to end up in hell too. You can't do it your way. You got to do it God's way. Hello? To reverse the poison of Korah, you must look at Jesus. You got to look at the serpent. You got to break the power of sin. So put a shut to the put a put a stop to your rebellion. And put a you don't have to you don't have to don't talk back. You don't, have to, don't talk back to God. Amen. And you young people, you don't have to talk back to your parents. Now I told now my, I've always told my kids, you can ask me a question. Ask me. You know, ask me why, you know. Fine, ask me. Absolutely. I'll explain to you why. But don't argue with me all day. Amen. And so Moses comes down with those Ten Commandments. Let me tell you, let me tell you a secret. Those are not the Ten Suggestions. Those are the Ten Commandments. There's a difference between a suggestion and a commandment. We in America and we in the church today treat it as like the Ten Suggestions. Well, God said thou shalt not commit adultery, but God, he didn't. You know, this is 2016. Everybody's doing it. We're going to do it our way. Okay, go right ahead. Do it your way. But if you do, the, ser the rebellion is going to cause the serpent to bite you. Don't just do it your way. Do it the Lord's way. Amen? I want to be and I want to be poison free. Poison free zone right here. Right here around me. Poison free zone. <laughs> I don't want the poison of the serpent in my heart, in my mind, in my body, in my life. So, amen. Let's, let's get rid of that rebellion. Let's get rid of that talking back, fighting back. Let it go. There's a, there's a, is there's, you've got to be submissive to somebody. You know, uh, Bob Dylan, I wish, I, I, wish this, I could play the song right now, but Bob Dylan wrote a song, You're Going to Have to Serve Somebody. I love that song. Well, it might be the devil, or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. I can't, I can't do Bob Dylan, but you know, he, he don't really sing. He just kind of talks it, you know, or whatever. I like Bob Dylan, though. But you're going to, you know, you might be an ambassador to England or France. You know, I can't remember all the words, but you're going to have to serve somebody. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Amen? Y'all ought to look that song up, but some of you don't know that song, do you? How many of you know that song? Oh, there's quite a few does, some of us older folks. Nahum 1.7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Stronghold. A stronghold is a, a fortress. It's got, you got the walls around you. You got the protection around you. The Lord is good. I, I like that that they sang that on that song today about the Lord being good. Listen, the Lord ain't bad. He's not causing nothing bad happen to you. The devil, the thief, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God is not bringing bad stuff to you. God don't have bad stuff to give you. Well, God made me sick. No, he didn't. God don't have no sickness to give you. God is a healer. He don't have nothing bad to give you. Well, God burned my house down. No, he didn't. 
The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God don't burn houses down. Hallelujah. Even in Job's situation, it was the devil that burned the house down. Amen. You got to realize who you're dealing with. Make sure you got your head on straight about who you're dealing with. Too many people blaming God for stuff. God don't have nothing to do with it. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust him. Step two, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust in him. You know, trust is, is hard to come by nowadays. People don't trust each other. They don't trust the law. They don't trust the government. They don't trust the doctors. They don't trust the preachers. They don't trust the evangelists. They don't trust nobody. But you know what? When you can't trust anybody else, you can trust Jesus. You can trust the Lord. And, and, and that's when he puts that army of angels around you to build that wall around you when you trust him. Hallelujah. Two, trust in the Lord. Number three, know his name. Psalms 91 verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Psalms 9, 9 says, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. Those who know, there's, oh my goodness, I could preach for like six weeks on this one phrase. Those who know your name will trust in you. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tire and the, the righteous run into it and they're safe. See? The name of the Lord, there are, there are, there's more than this, but there's at least 10 redemptive names that I can think of from the Hebrew. That's not even getting into the Greek. But the Bible calls him Jehovah Rapha. That's the Lord, my healer. So if you're sick, you call for Jehovah Rapha. You call for Jesus. He, Jesus is all of those, by the way. He's Jehovah Rapha, the healer. He's Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Amen. Jesus is all the things that God is. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Father and I are one. Hallelujah. When we've seen Jesus, we've seen, we've seen the Father. They're Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but man, they work together. Go team. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. And, and then his name is Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. So he takes your shame away, see? It, it, he's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our victory. You in a battle? Wave the victory flag. Nisi, Nisi, Nisi. The Lord's already given me the victory. Hallelujah. Rea, Jehovah Rea. The Lord's my shepherd. He feeds me, takes me to the water. He gives me green pastures. He gives me rest. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. He's the shepherd. All those things. If you remember his name, you can trust in him. If you remember, he's your healer, provider, savior, victory, peace, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, the Lord, our peace. He's our Abba Father in the Greek. He's the Daddy, Daddy. Amen. We can trust Him. And, and just when you know His names, listen to me. When you know His names, you know He's not putting bad things on you. Not a one of them says, Jehovah Sicky, I'm making you sick. Amen. Jehovah poverty. I'm making you poor. No. Are you listening to me? When you read his names, then you know his character. And then you stop believing these lies about him, then he's doing all this bad stuff in your life. Let's just lie from the pit of hell. Not one of you fathers would hurt your children. And if you do, you should be beaten. Not a one of you fathers 
would hurt your children. You're here to love your child. You give them what the, what you can give them. If they're sick, you get them the medicine they need to get them better. You are going to give them everything that's good for them. And the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. God's only got good things for us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Know his name, and then we can trust him. You need to learn those names. I've got a series on the seven redemptive names of the Lord. And I don't know. I think I took seven or eight weeks to teach that, probably eight or ten, I think, because I kind of drag, you know, on some of my stuff. But hallelujah. Number five, sing. Do you know you can just praise your way out of anything? You can just about sing your way out of anything if you sing and praise the Lord. Uh, Psalms 59, verse 16, but I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will sing of your love. For you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. Singing looses the power of God in your life to get you out of trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember back in the day in St. Louis, there was a there was a group of witches that were having a, a big meeting. And some charismatic Christians come through there, there and, and the witches were doing, so I don't know what all they were doing. They were doing what the witches do. I don't know. They were doing occultic stuff and so forth. And, and uh, they, uh, the group of Christians came through there and they were singing. They were singing songs to Jesus, love songs to Jesus, songs about the blood. And singing in the spirit to the Lord. And the, such a spirit of confusion came on the witches. And that, that it just a spirit of confusion just come on them. And they disbanded. And some of them got saved because of that. Because of the, the power. See, the power of praise will break the demonic things that are coming against you. See, the devil's coming against you. He come, let me tell you something about it. God's always wanting to bless you and the devil's always trying to curse you. God's always wanting to do something good to you. The devil's always trying to do something bad something to you. So you just got to stay one step ahead of the devil. And so one way you can stay one step ahead of the devil is just sing your way through life and praise your way through whatever's going on. Really, is it really, really bad? Well, praise, praise yourself out of it then. Amen. Praise your way out of it. It's just like that big battle that they had back in Second Chronicles chapter 20 when the sons of Ammon and the Hittites and the Jebusites and of the parasites, they were all they were coming against, and the termites, they were coming against, that's not really in there, uh, they were coming against the uh, Jehoshaphat and the armies of God. And so the armies of God were being uh, surrounded by four different enemies. They were in trouble. Listen, they were outnumbered, 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 10 to 1. God's people were outnumbered 10 to 1. All these, uh, these four other armies were surrounding them. And God just said, and so, so Jehoshaphat went and f he fell on his face. But the Bible says, he, you just read Second Chronicles chapter 20. He fell on his face before the Lord and said, Lord, what are we going to do? And the Lord said, here's what you do. So, so did you catch it? He cried to the Lord, didn't he? Sought the Lord. You better be seeking the Lord about your problem. So the Lord told him, he said, this is what you do. You go out tomorrow. You get your trumpets, you get your tambourines, you get your singers, and you all go out there and you just sing and praise me. What? I thought she was going to tell me how to, I thought she was maybe going to shoot him with a ray gun or have a, you know, have a, 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 a volcano, you know, drop a bunch of lava on him or something. No, just go out there and praise me. So the Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 20, the next day they went out. And they, set, uh, they sent out the singers and the praisers. Now, y'all look this up when you get home because you that prove that I'm right. Second Chronicles chapter 20. They sent out the praisers, and it says that they praised the Lord in the beauty of holiness. They praised the Lord. And they said, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says when they did that, and then they blew the trumpets, and they, and they pray, played the tambourines, and they danced, and they praised, and they worshiped. Do you know what happened? God sent angel troops called ambushments. Angel troops called ambushments against them and then went in there and, and caused them into, uh, to, and, and all the enemies defeated each other. 
God's people just went out there and took all their stuff when they're laying there dead. They didn't do anything but sing. So you you know how to get well, I don't I need some I need some money. Well sing sing some in. One of your enemies of probably fall dead and you just go take their money. <laughs> I don't mean literally. I don't mean literally, but our enemy is the is, is Satan. And he's got a hold of some of our goods. And as we praise the Lord, he'll turn loose of them. He can't stand praise. See, the enemy binds, binds up the things that God wants us to have. Did you ever read over there in Daniel chapter 10 where the, the, uh, the angel, Daniel was praying for something to happen, and it said that the, the demonic angel, the prince of Persia, the demonic uh, angel of Persia had his, uh, the answer to his prayer. And when uh, Daniel kept praying and fasting, that the, it, took, it, it took the great uh, angel uh, Michael, the archangel Michael, it took him 10 days to break through to get that answer of prayer and bring it to Daniel. Well, some of us would have prayed nine days and quit. The 10th day, we'd have it if you just prayed that 10th day. Are you listening to me? Quit giving up so quick. Don't give up quick, sister. Don't, get, don't give up quick, brother. <laughs> Amen. God's got an answer for you. He's got a bl There's a blessing on the way. There's a blessing on the way. There's a blessing on the way. Just keep praying. Hallelujah. Sing your way out of that situation, just like the children of Israel did. Look at Psalms 91.15. Am I going too long? Oh, my goodness. I need three more hours. Bless the Lord. I may have to finish this next week. I'll tell you what. I'm going to stop after this one. Psalms 91.15. I only have five, six more points, but I'm just going to do this one more. Then we'll pick back up on this. And we'll talk some more next week how to get out of trouble. Don't delay. Pray, pray, pray. Psalms 91.15 says this. <coughs> Psalms 91.15. When they call on me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, got, they went into the fire. Daniel went into the lion's den. Peter went down into the water. Jonah went into the belly of the whale. All of these people were in trouble, in trouble, in trouble, in trouble, in trouble. But they had a brain. Say, I have a brain. <laughs> so I'm going to use it. <laughs> Amen. Because it says here, when they call on me, I will answer. The King James Version says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he heareth them, Psalms 107, 20, and he delivered them from their distresses. Glory be to God. We cry unto the Lord in our trouble, and he heareth us and delivereth us. But Psalms 91, 15, when they call on me, I will answer. What about when you don't call on him? Well, you know what? If you don't ring my phone, I ain't going to be able to answer, am I? Duh. I said, duh. You ain't been calling on God. Who you been talking to? It ain't God. You talk to God, he's going to answer. You call on God, he's going to answer. You ask him about it, he's going to tell you the answer. You seek him, you're going to find him. Yeah, but it didn't happen day one. Yeah, it might not. Didn't happen day two. Yeah, well, maybe not Maybe not till day 10. Or maybe who knows when. Did you ever notice, why do, you, why, do we get, why do you and I get in such a hurry about things? What is with us? Did you ever notice that God sent, well, you know, the, was, it was Nahum. Uh, who, who was the guy that had the leprosy? Was it Nahum? Nahum had the, the leprosy. Naaman, Naaman. Naaman had the leprosy. And so he sent over to Elijah and said, Now, Elijah, uh, you know, I, I, I need uh, Elisha. Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha. And, and he said, You know, I got this leprosy. I want you to come over and pray for me. I want to be healed of this leprosy. And uh, uh, so Elisha said, No, I don't think I'll be coming. Well, the king, you know, this, this guy was a big-time leader. 
He was a, he was a big wig. And, and Elisha's not even going to take time to come. Hey, listen, if I don't come and run, when you, when, when you ask me to do something, and, 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 and when you say jump, I don't jump, how, how, let, let, this give me the benefit of the doubt if I tell you something. I might be telling you something that God wants you to do. I'm not saying I always will, but I might be. And you might be listening just in case. So Elisha said, just go tell Naaman to dip in the river Jordan, the stinky, muddy river, seven times. Well, his servant came back, told him that, and he said, I wish I could talk as freely as I want to. He just said, ain't no way. No way, Jose. That's what he said. No way, Jose. I ain't going to do it. I, here, I'm a king, and I send for the prophet. The prophet won't even come. I expected the prophet to come and lay hands on me. That's what he said. I expected the prophet to come over here and lay hands on me. How come he ain't going to do that? He's not going to anoint me, sprinkle oil on me, sprinkle, do something to me. He told me to go dip in the muddy, stinking water. That's the dirtiest river that we have over here. And so, so his, his servant just calmed him. Now, now, name just now, now, just stay calm. Now, would it hurt you to dip seven times? What if you get healed if you dip seven times? He talked him into, he said, well, that's true. So he goes down to the River Jordan, and he dips one, two, three, four, five, six, nothing. Nothing. Got it? Also called nothing. Nothing. Nada. <laughs> Not, <laughs> and see, now listen, people. Many of us, well, he said, well, I'm not any better. I'm not better the first time. I'm not any better the second. Not any better the third, fourth, fifth, sixth time. I'm not any better. Thank God he did the seventh time. He dips the seventh time, comes up out of there, and it says every bit of his leprosy was gone. What was magical? Was it the seventh dip? It was the obedience. It was the obedience to God. Do you want to be blessed by God? Obedience. Obey the Lord. Yeah, but I don't like that. Well, tough tuna. Get blessed or don't get blessed. Right? We well, can get blessed or not. <laughs> I'm going to get my blessing. I am. Come hell nor high water, I'm going to get my blessing. And I'm not going to let my own stinking pride get in the way. Some of God's ways are just too simple to do. Why? That's just too simple. Exactly. God is simple with us because he knows we're children. <laughs> he knows we're just a little bit simple. And we need him to get us out of trouble. But to get out of trouble, we've got to pray. We got to sing. We got to know his name and his character and his ways. Hallelujah. We got to trust him. And we got to put a shut to the rebellion and the talking back. And we just got to learn to be obedient. And when we do these things, plus six more that I'll tell you next week, we're going to get out of trouble. We're going to get out of trouble. We're going to avoid trouble in the future. And we're going to be blessed. Are you glad you came today? Let's stand together.